Well, it's running now. I am going to take it around the block. I've had it around the block a few times. Now, it broke about four to five times majorly before it made it out of the parking space. And it also had an injury accident. I ran over my roommate's toe. I stayed at the scene, but he refused medical services. So, uh, and he returned home, which he was already home. So, here she is, and it's a beauty. Well, okay, it's not a beauty, but I love it. I've had it around the block a few times. The first time I took it out around the block, the transmission broke. So, uh, I fixed it, and uh, let me show you all about it. see it's it's not straight up sides it's got a little curve i'm sure it should have had more I have a door, but the window's easier. All right. Now, here we are. Now, it's quite noisy, actually. You know, you think of electrics as being silent. But, see, I live here next to, there's the chain drive. And I don't have the, I'm gonna put carpet and all that rear seat. But right now, I've got the electric motor and the drivetrain in this little acoustical cove aimed at me. And so it's quite loud. But I, it doesn't mean anything bad as far as I know. It's hard to make this stand work. But we're gonna do it. We're gonna try to do it anyway. Headlight. And uh, a few other things I have to turn on. And there we go. Our buttons. If it break off. Yes, it has a handbrake. Voltage on, reverse, brakes work, oops, there, okay, I'm reversing out, reverse works like crap, forward works fine. You can see my rear view mirror, works very well. Amaze my neighbors. Put it forward. And here we go. See, I can turn with one hand, with one hand on the camera, even when I'm stopped, because the steering wheel is actually quite good. And here we go.
Fixing all morning. Actually, I took the part out last night. And I'll show you what happened. My fault. Bad welds came apart. Because I had redesigned. Now, the same thing happened to Apollo 13. See, I redesigned it. At, at first, the power was never going to go through the idler sprocket. It was going to direct pull on the chain, and the idler sprocket was just going to take up the slack. But then I changed it because the motor's mounted lower. So now when it pulls, it pulls on the idler sprocket too. So the welds had come loose. I'll show you where. I can't get in there, but my camera can. See, I welded the hell out of this now because uh, these little welds broke and the sprocket came right off. The bearing was fine. The bearing was fine, but the sprocket came off. So I pulled this thing out last night, and I brought it back and welded it all up. And now it's really welded. It's welded much better. So, you know, this thing only has a few parts. Uh, and now, I'm worried about the sprocket that I welded on the back. The rear drive sprocket. I mean, knowing what I know now, I'd, I'd spin a couple more rods and weld it even more. I welded it quite well, I thought, but next time I'll do even stronger, even thicker and even stronger. But in the meantime, this is going back together, so in an hour I'll be driving. Now last night, I coasted it home. Last night I coasted at home and a cop came by. A cop came by there and they drove by and they sat right there for a while. And I had my camera out, I was filming my car. I thought, well, they're going to come talk to me about it or they're not. He just went on about his business. This neighborhood is so wonderful. Now, if they wanted to bust the illegal vehicles, hiding now but at night it's out on the road and they got go-karts down the street they got a whole field of go-karts down there so this is the fun street so it was terrible but that part won't break again and hey it's only got a few parts in it I get all the parts fixed it won't break so is thrilling the neighborhood right now. Uh, you know, I'm not supposed to have it parked on the curb because it has no license plates. That's what I was afraid of. But I'll get them soon. And I'll get rid of that ugly headlight. Don't you worry, I'm gonna have some built-ins. But that's after inspection.
ignition is running fine, but I had a car fire. Once the transmission was doing well, basically because I took it apart, I started using more power. And I was at the bottom of it, I was rounding my corner coming home. And I stepped on the gas. I'm so happy with my gas pedal, see? I got a, a go pedal. There's my gas. Here's the handbrake over here. Here's the gas pedal. And the high low switch. And uh, which is now in the off position. And here is the wire coming in. And it burned up. And it stuck really bad. It burned up some other wires here, which I think I can fix. And I don't think they shorted out. It is kind of likely that the damage is confined to the input wires. And once the input wires were gone, everything else was safe. So, you know, this wire, this is two conductors, in, both in the same, it, not good enough for 100 amps, not at all. So I'll put a little bigger wire in, I'll be careful. I hope this thing isn't blown out. I think it probably is not. I'll find out soon. And the transmission now, as you can see, I took the first gear out. So what could be simpler? And uh, it's welded more strongly. So now it goes around the block without screwing up, except if it starts a fire. So uh, I'll set up for another drive with the camera really soon. I'm doing the nighttime shoot now, and you can see it's got its solar panels on. In fact, I still got the ladder next to it for mounting them. And they bolt on from the bottom there. It's got this cushion stuff around the edge. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the driving experience. This thing, you know, it's built like a soapbox derby racer. And so you would expect it to coast and it doesn't disappoint. This thing coasts like crazy. You know, I had to coast it back down the hill to, and it's not much of a slope, but yeah, it's a coaster. And when you're, you know, I went up the hill, but then I took a left and I pulled onto the level. I glanced down at the current meter just very briefly and it goes to zero right away. And that's a permanent magnet motor for you. When it reaches its top speed, it just stops drawing current. So this thing is going to be on the level. This thing is going to be astoundingly efficient. And you know, I live on a hill, so that's the way it goes. But if it can't go up a hill, you can't drive it. So, uh, you know, the thing about this, the brakes work great, the steering works great, and the suspension is, well, it's very softly sprung. And it's fun to drive. It's really, you know, it, it's very stable. Uh, it wants money. Uh, the controller is going to cost me twice what the motor cost. The motor only cost me 300 bucks. But they want 600 bucks for a good controller for this thing. And that's the small controller. The least I can get away with. Uh, I, should, I should get it. You know, it's always good to have headroom on that controller because you can't fix it if it goes out on the highway. In fact, it wouldn't be bad to have a spare. But, you know, this is what happened. I was down at the corner and I stepped in the gas and it drew current. <clears throat> the Chinese controller, that was the end of that. Right, so right now, I have this thing hooked up to the house because it has batteries in it. And so, it's part of my house power. And this is the whole thing about electric cars. They coordinate with the house. That means matching them to your rooftop and matching them to your 
electricity needs. And I like to use a safe, sane voltage. I like 60. I think between 48 and 60 is wonderful. You're not going to get hurt that bad unless you do, you know, we hope.